Hey friends, I'm gonna do another video today in acrylics. Um, we're gonna be painting um, a coastal scene, like a, I think it's somewhere in the Baltic regions. I found this picture in, uh, on Facebook, so I decided I want to demonstrate this one. It seems simple enough, the shapes and uh, the subject. So um, I'm doing on an eight by ten uh, uh, canvas panel. Okay. Then we have our colors, cad yellow, alizarin crimson, cerulean blue, ultramarine blue, burnt umber, and titanium white. All right, so this is acrylics. So let's start with a drawing. Uh, let's start with the horizon. Horizon's gonna be like somewhere around here. Right. You never want to go in the middle of the canvas, okay? Uh, try and learn about the, your uh, the golden rules of um, selecting where your composition is going, to, how your composition is going, to, is going to be laid out. The the rule of thirds. So you want to divide your canvas into thirds, okay? So like this, and these corners are the most preferred area where you want your viewers to look at all right so i'm going to be in this quadrant i mean i'm not going to draw all four all three uh all four quadrants but because i pretty much know where i want to put my composition but just a handy dandy thing to remember all right so now uh this you picture should pop up somewhere for you. So let me see, about right there. This much under the sea. There's another little mound. I'm not going to do a detailed drawing of this, but just so you know, there's another mound right here. Okay, and rocks. All right. So now let's start. Today I'm going to start with the darks. I'm going to use a filbert, okay, number four. And I'm going to start with my darks. So we're going to start with the burnt umber, a little bit of ultramarine blue, maybe a little bit of cad yellow. So I'm basically starting with the mid value meaning I'm not going too dark and I'm not going too light on the values because I want to have the, this liberty of being able to um, be able to place some lighter colors on uh, on top of this without you know having the interference of the base color being too dark because if I try to put a light color over this it's not going to be as bright as my brightest bright that I can have if I were to leave this, you know, in a lighter uh, uh, value, okay? Right now I'm putting the approximate colors 
and the approximate values. Values mean how dark or how light. Okay, just keep that in mind. If this is your first time joining me and watching me paint, um, you will notice that paint in very <clears throat> impressionistic style. All right, so now I'm going to do the darks down here, which is kind of a dark purple. Maybe a tiny hint of white on this side of the beach. This is a rough textured canvas that I'm using here. Now remember to keep your brush damp. Because some people ask me, that question comes up a lot, how do I get the, my paints to flow this easily? It's because I keep my brush damp. I don't use a, a dry brush. Unless I'm doing a dry, dry technique as far as applying the paint on the canvas. And remember, when you're painting acrylics, you will always go through this ugly phase where you like the painting is like, ugh, this does not look right, does not look good. That's the part where people usually give up on, and it's a fatal error. You do not want to do that. Because remember, with acrylics, you're building up the stages of the painting. Now remember when I said that I keep my values um, in the mid, mid values meaning not too dark, not too light, right in the middle. And I said that the reason is I try to keep uh, in the middle because I want to be able to put light colors without too much interference from the base colors being too dark. Because if I put light colors over this, over a dark base, it's not going to be as bright as I want it to be. And here is an example of that. Okay, I used a lighter color on top of this dark base. Look at the difference here and look at the area right here. Okay, you notice how the color is a lot brighter reflecting more of the true color all right so keep that in mind just a little tip for you so if you're gonna have a part somewhere that's you need you're gonna have lighter colors try to make that area not too dark all right you want to keep it in mid-tone value or a lighter value to be an approximate you can always add darks over it especially in acrylics because it dries pretty quickly so um just a word of caution and just a little tip on that so let me do this valley here. Because I'm going to have some lighter colors here versus here. So I'm not going to go too dark with that wash that I'm putting right here. Okay. All right, let me finish with this part. And remember, acrylics 
do not cover as well as oils will. And what do I mean by cover is the fact that if I was to add another color on top of this with an acrylic color, I'd probably be able to see the base color a little bit versus if I took one stroke with an oil color right here, I'll be able to cover this fully without being able to see the, the background color. Okay, that's what I mean by, if you ever hear me say the term, uh, covering power, that's what I mean. Okay, so let's finish the rest of the beach. Let's put a lighter, I'm gonna put a wash of burnt umber, maybe with a little bit of white. I'm putting a lot of water on my brush. Maybe I might go a little bit darker. These are the rocks that are going to be here. Maybe add a little bit of blue to that. Okay, we're, like I said, we're not trying to be too precise here with our painting and drawing. If you're looking for precise work, then you might as well just skip along this, this channel because it's not what I do. I do, like I said in the beginning of the video, more of an impressionistic style of painting. I will get to the clouds over here a little bit in a few minutes because it's a little, gonna be a little bit more intricate. So I'm gonna do the easy parts first. So now I'm gonna do the water. It's got a little bit of burnt umber in that blue because I want that water to be muted. That blue to be a bit muted. Add some white, maybe a little bit more. Let's see, what do we have here? Too dark. Maybe a little bit, ooh, too much. Too light. That was a big, big mistake on my part. All right, that should be about the right color. There you go. All right, and as I'm going down, I'm gonna put a little bit more blue to this. Right, they said they say even add a little bit of cerulean blue. White. Maybe a little bit of yellow. More white. Create like a gradient. And a lot more white. A little bit of yellow to show this shallow water. And maybe just a little hint of crimson. Whoops. Damn it. All right, now let's work on these clouds. 
Uh, actually, let's use this mix that I have right here while I'm at it. So this is going to be the darker part of the cloud. I know you're saying green. Now just add a little bit of red. And now you have these this grayish these grayish tones here. Notice I'm using a light wash. I'm not going too dark right off, right off the bat. I'm at an awkward angle here, the way I'm painting. some of these darks to make the base of the clouds all right so now let's add a lot of white to this and just go over what I just did, even some parts of it. Let these colors mix. Add a little bit of blue. Add some color. These clouds are not totally white, okay? There's a mixture of other colors mixed into it. The only difference is that is because they're very subtle and you don't see them. So you have, kind of have to use your creativity. There's a lot of ways to describe white without putting white. Just by showing lighter colors, you could portray white using you know um, lighter values. So I'm using, as you can see, a mixture of colors. I'm even using, using a little bit of cerulean blue. Depending on how cool of a gray you want and how light, I mean how cool or how warm you want this gray to be. See this is gray, but I made a cooler gray compared to the earlier but I went right over it and notice like this the, the base undertones are showing right through which is something that I want so it's kind of mixing in together just adding a variety of colors of of this clouds here let's do the same thing here if you can't see the white of these clouds the white puffs of these clouds is because your background color is probably either equal to the value of uh, the color of the cloud. So what you have to do is either make the cloud whiter, which at this point I really can't make any more white than what it is. So that means that gray or the background color has to be darker value. Remember this thing that you need, you know, uh, dark to show light and light to show dark. So.
just adding more variety of colors to this cloud here to really make this white stand out. Same thing here. Let me add a lot more white to this. And it's okay if you like scumble. This is scumbling over colors that you already laid down. So what that's gonna do is mix the top color with the base color, which the top color you're, when you're scumbling really um, makes it thin. Okay, I'm not adding a heavy coat of color over these because if I do that, I'll just take this out completely. I'll take these darks out completely. So what I'm doing is scumbling, meaning I put the, my heavier color in one spot and then I just like feather it in just like that feather it in all right so I believe this is like the Baltic coast or something like that let me take a little bit I'm taking a number um, two filbert to finish in the rest of this so we have ultramarine blue Put a little bit too much white. A little bit of cerulean. Make this nice cozy blue here. And here actually I'm using thick paint to try and cover some of this. And then I feather it in to these dark parts of the cloud. See I'm just like feathering it in and then there's a cerulean blue and kind of yellow a little bit this lighter part of the sky right here these two together while the paint is still wet make a transition color <clears throat> so now I'm basically like kind of sculpting the clouds a little bit breaking the clouds there. You can make like several breaks in a cloud. You don't have to follow the picture completely. And here goes another one here. All right, let me work on more of the clouds here. White, a hint of yellow, too much. I'm 
making like a C stroke to wisp these clouds in there. Do the same thing here. Let's have some lighter parts of the sky. Just like that, not too much, just here and there. Also, if you're new to acrylics, don't forget that acrylics dry um, darker than the initial color that you put in. Uh, let me form the base of these clouds a little bit more. brush keep it wet and I'm feathering out these colors do the same thing here and I'm really what I'm doing here is make, putting a wash basically is what I'm doing and just just like that. So now let's start working on these um, on these trees here. So we're gonna go burnt umber, a little bit of yellow. I'm gonna keep it that way. Maybe a little bit of blue, huh? Burnt umber, blue, and a little bit of yellow. So let's make resemblance of trees. Maybe more yellow at some places. Vary your greens by using more or less ultramarine blue or cerulean blue in certain aspects. some more darks here. You got an extension of this grassy area. Basically what I'm doing is adding um, alizarin crimson, ultramarine blue, and burnt umber to get the colors that, I'm, that I need to make it a dark Actually, let me put a wash. That's the beauty about, about acrylics. You could put like thin over thin. There's really no rules to how you paint with acrylics. Versus oils, this would have, have to dry or be really thin and I'd have to go over with thicker color in order to make any adjustments. Acrylics is basically like the honey badger of Um, painting mediums 
because it really just doesn't care. Let me fix this cliff right here. So now I'm gonna, while I'm at it, I'm gonna put some highlights. I could add, the pro proper color would have been to use yellow ochre. I just don't have it on my palette right now. So I'm just gonna put uh, alizarin crimson, yellow, and maybe a hint of Burnt umber, lots of white. Now I'm working some of these facades. See, had I not darkened that area, I would not have been able to see the brighter colors come through. The highlights, should I say. some more dark stuff here. Ultramarine blue, a little bit of crimson and burnt umber. Kind of sculpt this facade a little bit more. Let me fix some of these trees by. some sky hole break up this mass a little bit What I'm doing here is making a gradation of color from dark to light to give it volume is what I'm doing. See my lighter colors that I'm transitioning to a little bit more um, yellowish warm color here and then it's going to be a little bit lighter towards here in a second. So let me add a little bit of blue to that same mixture. Whoops. Add a blue to that mixture. A little bit of burnt umber. Do some of that here to like break up the ridge here just make it like a little ridge 
let me put some highlight just by putting a lot of white a little bit of yellow let's made it more orange further away from the light source not as yellowy as I did it earlier there you go so now you can see a transition around the bend here now at the base of that mound or cliff should I say I see like Some vegetation so what I did was use burnt umber yellow and a little bit of ultramarine blue and white to give it a grayed out and I'm barely touching or barely putting any pressure on the canvas here barely and my brush is like almost dry basically you know what, let me add a rock here somewhere. work on this these greens here let's do that ultramarine blue cad yellow maybe a little bit more burnt umber but more yellow maybe a little bit cerulean maybe a little bit of red ultramarine blue yellow the red was just to darken and warm and, and warm and warm that um, green a little bit more I see darker areas here this is why I go lighter values or midtone values so I can add darks and lights at will now let me fix over here start working on some of these color I'm gonna use a little bit of cerulean blue a cooler color with a little bit of alizarin crimson it's gonna make like a, it's gonna make like a dirty purple little bit of burnt umber put some of these cooler sh shadows here use your finger to feather it out if you want got some cooler shadows maybe a little bit of burnt umber as I go up Red, cerulean, a 
maybe a little bit more burnt umber. And I can sculpt, even though if I painted in that area already, I could always sculpt it to what I want it to be. Now I see this some, let me see. I could use this dark to make more rocks here. And we're gonna work on these rocks a little bit more, fix them. Just, you know, give suggestions. Basically is all I'm doing here, is suggestions of rock by doing these dark colors here. There's debris on the beach here. And I'm using the same color that I used for, for here, really, for this, uh, for this area. What? Sorry. Now let's work on highlights again. I'm going back and forth with everything. Hint of yellow. Lots of white. That's too much yellow. So let's give this beach some highlights. And notice I'm just putting the yellow, the highlights arbitrarily on the beach okay just so I could give a little bit more visual interest and I'm letting some of the base color show through which is going to give the effect of you know an uneven beach you know uh, I've never met or I've never been to a beach where mother nature just had it so you know perfectly rendered if you guys know that beach, just let me know. Put in the comments somewhere. There you go, some brighter areas. And notice I'm not really being too careful where I'm going. I'm just letting loose. This is what it's all about. I'm going to make some rocks here. So watch this. Watch what I'm going to do here. Um, Take some white. Let me put it right here. Thick white. Lots of water. Erase the one you, the ones you don't want. Maybe put a little bit of blue to that too. And now watch. I'm just going to go back over. Some of that purple mixture, just make a little bit more of it. And just go over some of the areas. Actually, let me put some more here. There you go, you get to see it again.
not too bright. I'm going to tone it down a little bit. There you go, just like that. Just to show like some light is like slightly hitting that area a bit. And I'm not wetting my brush. My brush is kind of dry. It's not really... There you go. It's not really wet here. My brush is like damp, but more on the dry side. There you go. So it's got, you got some of that dispersed light coming through. I'm going to take a round brush. This is a number four round. Let's make rocks. Uh, use white, burnt umber, Do that just just dabbing along. Put some yellow to that. Burnt umber. Lots of white. Yellow again, some blue just to just to show like some of the moss from the tide, like the algaes from the outgoing tide. Some burnt umber on that green. Just like that. Wipe it away. There you go. Add variety. And let's see, uh, what can we do to somewhat enhance this painting? Just need to fix this. If you hear the rain back here, it's because we're going through Hurricane Ian right now as I'm painting. But I'm on a safer side of uh, the coast. I'm on the east side of the storm. So hope everybody stays safe on the west coast. All right, so let's see. What else do I want to do to this? Let's add a sailboat here somewhere. Bring my brush to a good point. Flick, flick. One here, there you go. Let's make their shadows, their reflection. Wipe it off right away before it dries. There you go. You want to add a seagull here somewhere? 
I don't want to make it too busy, but uh, let me see. Yeah, no, you know what? I'm not, I'm not going to put seagulls in there. Otherwise, it's going to make it a little bit too busy. I may even redo this painting on a larger format. Even maybe do it in oils. I don't know yet. I kind of like it. So that was that. So just to recap, we started out with our darks, but we did like middle values. Okay, meaning not too dark, not too light, to where you can add darker darks and add lighter lights on top. Like I showed you here, what happens when you add a lighter color over a lighter color you'll have brighter colors if you add a lighter color over darker colors you'll have a darker more on a dark side uh, you're gonna have a highlight that's more on a dark side but not as bright as you want it to be so it's kind of hard to explain but I showed you that towards the beginning of the clip so we got all the darks out of the way and then you saw how we did the clouds that you can you you could describe white in many different ways by adding darker colors surrounding what you wanted to show white so basically here i mean you couldn't get any more white than the canvas itself so what i did to show bright white i added white and yellow and then the surrounding i made it grayish a variety of grays cool grays and dark and warm grays by using uh what whether it's cerulean blue and on burnt umber and a lot of white or ultramarine blue burnt umber and white I used the combination of ultramarine blue, a little bit of alizarin crimson, um, burnt umber, and white to make these varieties of darkness. So right here is ultramarine blue and burnt umber and white. Here there's a little bit of red popping through, okay? And here you can see it's where I did the white plus the cad yellow. And um, if I had a uh, darker blue here this will really the clouds will really stand out now if this was in oils i'd probably <coughs> excuse me my voice is running out if i did this in oils <coughs> excuse me i'd probably like blend these in a little bit more it'll be more softer softer edges but when you're painting with acrylics especially the way i paint it's kind of hard to have soft edges you could give this feeling a soft edges by the way you add other layers on top of your base layer okay it's just basically have you use your imagination on how to describe an object and how to convey it to the viewer is basically all I did here nothing about this is detailed absolutely nothing I, I mean look at here nothing's detailed here nothing is detailed but when you look from far away, when you take a quick glance at the painting itself, you have this feeling of, oh, it looks detailed, but really it's not. It's just the illusion of detail, which is what I like because it's what holds interest to the viewer. That's how you keep them guessing. And then you just keep them looking at your painting and let them make, or should I say, finish the story that you started in their own mind that's part of creating mood in a painting and how to create an interesting painting you have to let the viewer be able to interact with your painting and let them let their minds finish what they conceive the painting to be or you know however they want to interpret it in their head so there you go just a quick uh quick little know-how and tip here so I hope you got a lot of this. So if you like the demo, please like and subscribe. Or, and, uh, you know, you support my channel. And I thank you guys very much. Um, I'll have more paintings for you in the future. All right, guys. Thank you again. You have a great evening. And 
stay safe to all the Floridians on the West Coast. Have a good day.